It says now, we keep reading, too. It says, but there are also false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you. You see that? You see how he, 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 he flipped that? Remember, he's an apostle. In the beginning, Peter was the one telling them, you know, I mean, when they had their first congregation, they said that they, the people that were born-again believers, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to teaching, to learning. I'm going to be honest with you. In today's church, I don't see that. I do not see that. I see devotion to motivational speaking. I see devotion to prosperity movements. I see devotion to, um, and, and Lord forgive me, but I see devotion to people uh, not really wanting to get the gospel truth, but more in, more engaged with the supernatural. And I'm not saying that we don't talk about the supernatural because we cast out demons. We Pray for people in the Holy Spirit. We believe in healing the whole night. We actually do it. We live it, right? But what I'm saying is that when it comes to a point, when it comes to a point that you become, I, I joked about this, but I'll be honest with you, like a charismatic junkie where you become like, you only are concerned about the signs and wonders, but not the power behind that sign and wonder amen you become almost thank you holy ghost i was like where is this coming from because i feel like he just went somewhere else with it he said you become like simon the sorcerer you become like i'm more concerned about paying for this power you don't pay for no power the holy ghost peter was the one said you know in so many words take your money back and he said and hope that god forgives you you know he said like basically you're gonna crumble with all that if you if that is your real intentions he said because we can see that your heart is not in the right place you don't really want this holy ghost to save your life you want it to control people you want to be the man again amen that's what people are serving themselves the pride of life once again the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye instead of actually transform life i lord jesus your will be done not my will instead of picking up your cross and actively surrendering to the power and to the will of god Instead of bearing fruit of people, discipling, being, being discipled yourself. That's what happens. So there's false teachers out there. Amen. And now, and now what does it say here? It says, uh, there are false teachers among you. They will cleverly teach what? Destructive heresies. And even deny the master who brought, who bought them. In this way, they will bring sudden destruction on themselves. Many will follow their evil teaching and shameful, excuse me, shameful immorality. And because of these teachers, the way of truth will be slandered. In their greed, now check this out. The marksman of a false teacher is typically surrendered, uh, is typically centered around what? Greed. Any type of acquisition. Any type of control, like this wealth mindset, right? Uh, it says, in their greed, <clears throat> they will make up clever lies to get hold of whose money? Their money? Your money. It says, but God condemned them long ago, and their destruction will not be delayed. Hallelujah. That's why I tell people, you can say what you want about folks, even if you find out a false teacher. Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Meaning, and God has the best vengeance, amen? We always are trying to get even with people that hurt us. And I know, I can't say that. I've heard a story. People give up tons of money. They get it taken advantage of. You hear of just crazy. Pastors and, excuse me, pastors and teachers um, doing so many things Letting people iron their clothes, wash their, and I'm not talking about people that are sick. I'm talking about they just washing their cars. They're just being like their little minions, servants. Like going home, like just doing their house chores, all that stuff and saying, I'm being the armor bearer. I'm going to be, come on, guys. I don't even know. Like, look. No, you're being a lord over the people. And God said, don't do that. He said, the chief shepherd 
is Jesus. Amen? You're just temporary. Every pastor that's out there, every overseer, every leader, we are just temporary servants. We are temporary in our home cult positions. We want to serve our ego. Trust me, I've been there before. I've been there before. I know the enemy is, is very, very crafty. But I thank God that I didn't follow any type of teaching or go to a place where this becomes everything. These people live only for that. It says that because of these teachers, the way of truth will be slandered. In their greed, they will make up clever lies to get hold of what? Your money. So they will create stuff and say, hey, um, by the way, your son, and we've seen that terrible thing, your son will not get his full freedom unless you sow into the kingdom of God. Unless you give this $100, $200, $1,000, whatever thousand, whatever amount check to X and Y ministries, they will not be fully delivered or they won't be fully healed or they won't be. And it's just like, oh my gosh, God in heaven is really tripping off of the dollar amount. I mean, think about it. Even when Jesus was here and said, hey, the widow's might, that's not saying God, you know what it is? It's not the money. It's the heart behind the money. Amen. It's the motivation. He said, God loves a cheerful giver and not by what? Compulsion, not by manipulation. This is manipulation. And some people are being double deceived, meaning in the people that are in doing the deception, they really believe they're doing right. They're like, I was taught by so-and-so prophet, or I was taught by so-and-so, you know, evangelist, and this is how we did it. Well, you was taught wrong. You wasn't taught according to this word, because this word would give you eyes to see, right? Ears to hear what the spirit of God is saying. And you become like Simon the Sorcerer. And a lot of people are doing things not out of the motivation of Christ being the center of their life. That they really want to see souls made into the kingdom. No. They're using all these other things as ways to, you know, and I'm not saying that it's not cool. Because look, some people go, oh man, it's so cool. It's so interesting. You know, like people are looking for spirituality. Yeah, a lot of people are. But the Bible also says, test the spirit by the spirit. Amen? Not every spirit that comes is, is from Christ. That's why it's so important, guys, to be led by the Holy Spirit. That you will be able to see when someone new AG comes in your atmosphere and says, hey, I just want to get my chakras balanced and all this other stuff. Or, you know, we look at Christ as like Christ consciousness. Like he's just another level that ascended into the state of nirvana or whatever. Look, stop it. No. He's actually the one that saves your soul. He saves your soul. You put your faith in Christ. You trust and obey Christ. He is the one that can save your soul. You should be following him. Not thinking of him as a higher level of consciousness, but understand that you are a sinner. And you can only be saved by his, but hallelujah, by putting faith in the one in his marvelous grace. Amen? So let's keep reading. It says this. So it says about false teachers. And it says, but God condemned them long ago and their destruction will not be delayed. So yes, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. We know that. For, says this, for God did not spare even the angels who sinned. Wait a second. He threw them into hell. Or some of read Tartarus and gloomy pits of darkness where they are being held until the day of judgment. So even in the supernatural, even in the unseen, the angels that rebel, God is saying, and that's why I try to tell people, y'all y'all think demons are angels. They're not. This is part of the system of the kingdom of darkness. They are not fallen angels jumping from people's body to body. No. There are some wicked, perverse things that happen on this planet thousands of years ago that we can see in Genesis 3, Genesis 6, that talks about the sons of God, the Benai Elohim, and how they wanted to basically exterminate the human race and plant what they wanted here. And when they couldn't do that, the spirits of those dead hybrid things ended up doing what? Having the ability to occupy people through their sinful lifestyle. Hence why, hence why the kingdom of darkness always wants you to do what? sin. They always want you to be in darkness so they can do their bidding. 
and continue to torment mankind. So when Jesus, when, 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 hallelujah, yeah, when God, he said, I didn't, he didn't even spare the angels. So what do you think? So let's keep reading. It says, in the gloomy pits, he said, God did not spare the angels who sinned. He threw them into hell in gloomy pits of darkness where they are being held. So they're there right now, being held into the day of judgment. And God did not spare the ancient world except for Noah and his and seven others in his family. So he destroyed all of them, folks. It says, uh, Noah warned the world of God's righteous judgment. So God protected Noah when he destroyed the world of ungodly people in what? With a fast flood. Later, God condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and turned them into heaps of ashes. He made them an example of what will happen to what? Ungodly people. But God also rescued Lot out of Sodom because he was a righteous man who was sick of the shameful immorality of the wicked people around him. Yes, Lot was a righteous man who was tormented in his soul by the wickedness he saw and heard day after day. How many of us are really tormented by the constant wickedness we see in this world? The constant break, and it's not just wickedness just in just the world, but I can see stuff even with the body. When I hear stuff like, man, you hear some of the most, you wouldn't even imagine. You're like, no way. And like, I'm not trying to tell people like, oh man, the church is just crazy. No, look, the church has issues. We can all also see in First First Corinthians, like, several books, or excuse me, several epistles or letters being written by Paul telling them, hey, get this right. I'm paraphrasing. But hey, you guys need to get X, Y, and Z right. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? You were bought at a price. And he was talking about, you know, physical sexual sin. And he was saying, hey, you guys stop doing this. Your body, you're sinning against your body when you do these things. And your body was meant to be what? Holy. As even Peter says, be holy for I am holy. All right, let's keep reading. It says, you see, the Lord knows how to rescue godly people from their trials. So, excuse me. Did I fast forward too quick? It says, eight. Yes, Lot was a righteous man who was tormented in his soul by the wickedness he saw and heard day after day. So, you see, the Lord knows how to rescue godly people from their trials, even while keeping the wicked under punishment until the day of final judgment. That's how we should be seeing things. If you're living godly, then God will continue to pull you out of situations, even if you see all ungodliness around you. Amen? It says, he is, escape he is especially hard on those who what? Follow their own twisted sexual desire. Who is? Who is hard on those? Peter? No, God is. God is hard on those wannabe, crazy, demented, sexually. God is saying, I'm going to be hard on you. Literally, like, like he has issues with this. It says their own twisted sexual desire who despise authority. See, rebelliousness tells a person, I know better than everybody and I choose to do whatever I want. That's why the Bible says witchcraft is unto rebelliousness and stubbornness is as idolatry because you look at your viewpoint as the God. You serve yourself. If you serve yourself, how much different are you from Satan? How much different? He served himself. Look where it got him. Banished outside of the kingdom of, of God forever. You think he really cares about the other demonic forces? Like, there's like, we're a brotherhood. No, come on. Rebelliousness is what they're all on one accord with. Division is what they're all on one accord. Just imagine that. They're all on one accord about division against not themselves because they know that that's ludicrous you can't be divided against yourself they're not divided they're completely united in dividing you they're completely united in destroying you they're completely united in making mankind be tormented all right let's keep reading it says these people are proud and arrogant so that's one sign of a what false teacher amen or I would just say just a person that 
person just ain't right. It says, because if you have the Holy Spirit working through you, God's going to check your pride and your arrogance. Amen. It says, the people are proud and arrogant, daring even to scoff at supernatural beings without so much as trembling. But the angels who are far greater in power and strength do not dare to bring from the Lord a charge of blasphemy against those supernatural beings. Right? Keep reading. It says, these false teachers are like unthinking animals, or like the, the word of God says, brute beasts, creatures of instinct, born to be caught and destroyed. See, now people don't like that scripture, born to be caught and destroyed. Because they'd be like, wow, some people just literally are born to just be destroyed. I don't know. You can look into the scriptures to see what it says, but I don't know. Sounds like it's saying that. It says they scoff at things they do not understand, and like animals, they will be destroyed. Their destruction is their reward for the harm they have done. These people, I'm telling you right now, are destroying many people's lives. Like, and I'm saying that we can point all the fingers and say this person's a false this, this person's a false that. Come with the truth then. If you feel so convicted and you feel so convinced, then you need to come with the truth. You can't just come with correction and not come with solutions, amen? <clears throat> All right, so what's the next part? It says, their destruction is their reward for the harm they have done. They love to indulge in evil pleasures and broad daylight. They are a disgrace and a stain among you. They delight in deception. You see somebody delighting in deception, that's big, big, big warnings, okay? It says, even as they eat with you in your fellowship meals. Wow, so now he's talking about people right in their home, right in their backyard, right in their, their own city. They commit adultery with their eyes. All right, those are, those are, just get, check your eyes now. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. Especially a bunch of men. Because I know women and women be saying the same thing, but people be saying, oh, I just look off the menu. I don't, you know, I don't order nothing. No, don't look at the menu, period. We have to look. God is, God be telling it how it is. Look, they commit what? What did he say? They commit adultery with their eyes. It says, and their desire for sin is never satisfied. And I'm going to tell you, I've dealt with some people like that. Not just new in their spirit. They come over and they, they come in looking all, hey, hey, pastor, hey, hey, preacher, hey, this, hey, doc, how you doing? And they want to pray for people. They want to only pray for certain people, right? They pray on certain folks. You can even see it in their eyes. You can just see this, this demonic influence. And I'm like, okay, no, you need to get out of my church. You need to get out of our congregation. And some of us ain't got no discernment. They don't have spiritual discernment because we, they, they could talk a good talk, but are they walking that talk? Are they living? Look at people's lifestyle. Don't just be so quick. Oh, I trust this man of God because what he said. Okay, now look at their lifestyle. Oh, I trust this woman of God. No, look at their lifestyle. Go see what they do. See what they talk about. See what they're interested on. Beyond the four walls of the building. Now I'm going to say the truth is we, we say church in our mind, but the reality is the body of Christ is God's church. God is not coming back for buildings. Amen. Is he coming back for a building? Well, kind of, sort of. The body of Christ is his building. He's coming back for his people, his family. Amen. All right, let's keep looking at this. It says, and their desire for sin is never satisfied. They lure unstable people into sin, right? And they are well-trained in greed. So if you got somebody that's a greedy person, God talks about this. Even the qualifications of an elder says you cannot be a greedy person. You can't even be young, like young in the Lord. It talks about, and so these people are literally using their positions of power or positions of influence to do what? He says to lure unstable people into sin. So the basically unstable being in, you know, people are kind of weak. They don't have a really solid foundation. It says, and they're well-trained in greed. They live under God's curse. They have wavered off the right road and followed the footsteps of uh, Balaam, 
son of Beor, who loved to earn money by doing wrong. When people say, oh, man, I'm just, you know, trying to just, you know, get this money, whatever, man, look. You need to be getting godly. You need to be getting Jesus. Jesus goes beyond what you can acquire on this earth. The Bible clearly says, what profits a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? What does it profit? Nothing. Spend all this time trying to get the, the best cars, the best this, the best that. You hear it, people all the time. You hear the, 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 the kids and, and the people listening to the music and they talking about rollies on the wristwatch and, and driving all these Teslas and driving all this, these cars and I, I pull up in a Phantom and I was like, just stop. Love of money is the what? Root of all evil. The love of money. Not looking at money as an opportunity to be a servant, right? We don't look at it like that. There, let's keep reading. It says, but Balaam was stopped. He was stopped from his what? His mad course when his donkey rebuked him with a human voice. You guys read that before. I know you guys read that in that um in that uh in that other um animated Bible. Um which is a tripped out thing, the fact that even a donkey would even talk back, which just tells you God can do whatever he wants with his creation, y'all. We make it like he's just bound to these. That's why I can't stand when we try to say like, and this is just, you know, I'm not saying to nobody, but what I'm saying is, is this. God is not subject to his creation. If he created it, he can do what he wants with it. That's what the Bible says. If no one cries out to me, he said, I will have the rocks cry out. If no one wants to praise me, the rocks will praise you. I've never seen a rock praise anything. How is it going to form lips and just all of a sudden start emitting a signal to God? God's saying, it will do it if no one else does. So the very thing that you think is impossible, it's, impo it's possible with Christ. It's possible with God. Amen? So even a donkey rebuked this man. He says, these people are as useless as dried up springs or as mist blown away by the wind. They are doomed to the blackest of darkness. Now, when I hear this, this is where the spirit of God makes this connection. When it talks about people that serve and they said, and they got casted out into what? The outer darkness. So when I see that the blackest, blackest of darkness, this don't sound like heaven, guys. It don't exactly sound like the lake of fire, but it says the blackest darkness. They brag about themselves with empty, foolish boasting, with an appeal to twisted sexual desires they lure back into sin those who have barely escaped from a lifestyle of deception. So they prey on weak people, weak people that still want to sin or still don't know how to be. They don't even believe that they've been born again, right? It says, they promise freedom, but they themselves are slaves of sin and corruption. So just imagine someone saying, put your faith in Jesus, put your faith in Jesus, pass the, pass the uh, whatever, you know? Put $1,000 here, your $1,000 blessing, and God will take care of all this and all this other stuff, right? But then behind the scenes, they live in foul. And they don't teach no holiness. They don't teach you, hey, you shouldn't be uh, sleeping around like that, right? You shouldn't be watching that stuff. You shouldn't be putting these things into your body. They don't talk about freedom. They don't talk about deliverance. They don't talk about healing. They don't talk about emotional, right? Christ-centered therapy. They don't talk about none of that stuff. They don't talk about marriages being healed. They just make everything uh, centered around their organization or centered around them. I mean, I wondered if all these things got poured up and people just out of, all of a sudden would say in, in the middle of a church, just imagine millionaires. And they all started raising up and saying, all right, we're going to raise this fund up for these people that showed up today. like or. The word filling in the spirit, you know, pour into this man of God and pour into, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm too quote unquote little to even talk about the affairs of millionaires and stuff like that, or men of God that have influence. But the word of God is above everybody's opinion. Amen. The word of God is not subject to anybody else's. You could say in your mind, oh yeah, I, I choose to do this, but you got to make sure that you align with the word of God. Amen. That's the final authority. Hallelujah. The word of God should be the final authority, not just a person. The word of God is the final authority. 
price is. 